The Boxing Day floods of 2015 were a disaster for the people living in Calderdale. A 32 kilometre stretch of the river valley was flooded and numerous landslips were reported. The floods washed chemicals and sewage into the water and contaminated water spread quickly over the area, causing public health issues and affecting wildlife. Flood waters may arrive quickly, but they take time to recede and leave debris and damage behind. This video describes the cleanup and repair operations in the days and months after the floods and outlines the costs and benefits of the Calderdale Flood Management Scheme that was launched to reduce the threat of a similar catastrophe in the future. Calderdale is a region of West Yorkshire, west of Leeds and Bradford and northeast of Manchester. The main towns include Halifax, Todmorden, Hebden Bridge, Mytham Royd, Sowerby Bridge, Elland and Brighouse. As the Boxing Day floods took hold, emergency services and other agencies were engaged in supporting communities in the worst affected areas. Temporary defences were introduced and as the flood water receded, work began on cleaning up the debris left behind. Environment Agency staff and contractors cleared all high-risk channel blockages, 63 in total. They conducted a massive recovery operation, assessing and repairing damaged flood defences, walls and structures. They checked nearly 8,500 structures in total and had completed all the emergency repairs by the end of February 2016. Field teams and contractors worked tirelessly to build temporary defences and clear obstructions such as collapsed bridges, buildings, thousands of tonnes of gravel, debris and vehicles from rivers to reduce further flood risk at 150 locations. By April 2016, emergency repairs to 17 Yorkshire water pumping stations was complete and a new pump-out station had been installed in Hebden Bridge. Pumping stations help pump waste and surface water to the nearest sewage treatment works. Work to remove the collapsed section of the White Sands building on Burnley Road in Mythamroyd was also completed. The building had been overwhelmed during the floods, spilling rubble and building debris into the River Calder. In order to remove this risk and improve the appearance of the site, Environment Agency contractors had to demolish what was left of the building and clear debris from the river channel. £25 million was awarded by the Department for Transport for repairs to damaged roads in the area, including 41 kilometres of carriageway and 15 bridges. Elland Bridge was one of those that needed to be repaired. Rebuilding the 200-year-old Grade 2 listed bridge was a very complex and careful process. 28 major utility cables and pipes had to be redirected. To preserve the historic features, all of the original stone was reused on the new bridge. A 185-year-old stone toll bridge in Copley wasn't so fortunate and was destroyed beyond repair in the flood. An all-new steel and timber structure supplied by local specialists had to be lowered into place to replace the old bridge. Wilson Bridge is the new name chosen by local primary school children and residents for the Bridal Way Crossing, named after Graham Wilson, who lived at the adjacent Toll House for many years until his recent death. The flood caused a landslip in Mythamroyd which blocked Scout Road. The residents of nearly 20 houses were advised to leave their homes for safety reasons and Scout Road Academy students were forced to attend another nearby site. The problems, as a result of the landslip, were made more complicated after it was found that asbestos had been exposed. This required specialist contractors to monitor and work at the site to ensure this didn't present a further risk 
to safety. 250 metres of special steel fence was erected to protect against further landslips on Scout Road, offering protection for those using or living on the road. The fence allowed construction work to permanently stabilise the hillside to take place. In October 2016, as the repairs and cleanup continued, the Calderdale Flood Action Plan was published, with four main aims. Strengthening defences to reduce flooding from rivers and surface water. Natural flood management to slow down the flow of water. Developing resilient infrastructure by strengthening sewer systems, electricity substations and transport routes to ensure they can cope with future floods and community resilience, working with the community to help them prepare for and recover from flooding. In terms of costs, £127 million has been secured under the Flood Protection Scheme so far to strengthen defences, including an £89 million programme to reduce flood risk and protect 1,200 homes. Of this, £41 million of the funding was invested in the Myvernroyd Flood Protection Scheme, which protected transport routes and 400 homes. The scheme included hard engineering strategies, such as the raising of walls alongside the rivers and channel widening. Bridge modifications were a necessary element of the plan, and some bridges were removed and replaced. The flood wall alignment was also changed, so that high volumes of water can move more easily through the town. The work caused inconvenience as it was taking place, and hard engineering has an impact upon the environment. But in the longer term, there are considerable social and economic benefits. Defences were added or strengthened all along the Upper Calder, including in Hebden Bridge. But the plan doesn't just focus upon hard structures. Improving natural flood management in the upland areas of the river's catchment can have a major impact on the likelihood of flooding. One example is the 600 leaky dams which have been installed at Hardcastle Crags. These slow the flow of water in the tributaries of the River Calder so that peaks in volume are less excessive and this strategy has a positive impact on the natural environment. Afforestation is a soft engineering strategy which has been introduced to intercept rainwater. Over 110,000 trees have been planted by Yorkshire Water at Gorpley Clough. As the trees mature, they will increasingly slow the flow of water to the river channels and act as a store. A further 75,000 trees have been planted and over 2 kilometres of hedging have been introduced in other parts of the catchment by over 4,000 volunteers, including school children. 700 hectares of moorland have also been planted with new sphagnum moss and a further 20 hectares revegetated. 25,000 cubic metres of additional water storage areas have been identified. Reservoirs are kept 10% below their capacity in winter to provide a buffer in the event of heavy or significant rainfall. The management scheme looks to introduce greater community resilience and a volunteer network of over 500 people is already in place. Flood groups work for and on behalf of residents and businesses to help find ways to limit the effects of flooding. They act as a representative voice for communities and provide information to support them. Flood wardens are local volunteers who are supported by the Environment Agency and Calderdale Council. They play a critical role before, during and after flooding events by providing hands-on support to communities. 13 flood stores have been set up in key locations. £10 million has been awarded in grants for enhanced flood protection to owners of terraced housing and small employers. They are able to make improvements 
helping to protect homes and businesses. These improvements might include electricity boxes being moved upstairs, secure flood doors being fitted, and air bricks being modified to have closure valves. Flood risk is now reviewed on all planning applications in the vicinity. Sirens have been installed to warn of river flooding across the upper Calder Valley. With an audibility level similar to that used by emergency vehicles, the Environment Agency uses the siren to warn people of possible flooding. There are a total of eight flood warning sirens in key locations. It is intended to hold regular flood emergency days throughout Calderdale to practice flood plans and test the emergency response of Calderdale Council, the emergency services and partners to a major flooding incident, including a live search and rescue. Five new cameras have been installed along watercourses in the Calder Valley to help monitor drainage and assess flood risk. The sites have all been identified as areas where there is potential flood risk if maintenance is not carried out to drainage when necessary. Each camera will transmit an hourly image, allowing the council to remotely monitor the infrastructure and check nothing is blocking the drainage screens. As well as cameras, water level monitors will also be installed upstream and downstream of the screen complementing other flood warning systems in the surrounding area. During the flooding of winter 2015, many of the council's communication networks were not available or were severely disrupted in areas affected by power loss. The loss of power and inability to communicate effectively affected both the response and the recovery. A borough-wide VHF radio network was deemed critical to saving lives and reducing harm in the future. The system relies on several antennae and repeater sites on prominent buildings such as schools and sports centres which transmit the signals required to provide blanket coverage. The radio network not only adds effectiveness to the council's response it also provides a further means of communication within the community during major incidents or emergency responses. A number of electricity substations were also affected by the unprecedented water levels, resulting in power cuts for many properties across the Calder Valley. 14 electricity substations have now been moved to higher ground and an upgraded electricity substation has been installed next to the market area in Hebden Bridge as part of Northern Power Grid's investment to boost the resilience of its network in the upper Calder Valley. Homes and businesses often include large water resistant surface areas such as roofs, driveways and roads which cause rainwater to run off into highway drains overwhelming the drainage network. People are encouraged to install sustainable drainage systems, or SUDs, to help mimic natural landscape features which slow the flow of rainwater into drains, gutters and rivers. Many individuals, communities and organisations in Calderdale are already using SUDs. Mythoimroid flood wardens have built a green roof for their flood store, creating an attractive feature and doubling up its benefits to the local community. Organisations such as Slow the Flow and Calder Rivers Trust have built five rain garden planters in the courtyard of Hebden Bridge Town Hall using funding from the People's Postcard Lottery to demonstrate how suds work and encourage visitors to make their own inventions at home. Other initiatives are also being considered New LED street lighting, for example, may include flood monitor and communications resilience. The council is also looking at options such as Wi-Fi connections in the columns, higher level connections and battery backup in the event of power cuts. Only time will tell if all the time and money has been invested successfully.
There have been other flooding events in the valley since Boxing Day 2015 and the management scheme isn't expected to eliminate flooding completely. However, it should reduce the impact of flooding in vulnerable parts of Calderdale and it appears well planned and formidable. Hopefully, it can bring peace of mind and an increased feeling of security to the residents living in the area. Thank you for watching.